even when patients refuse ECT. In most places in the world, they are still not safe. So if a person determines, I don't want ECT, the psychiatrist can actually go to a judge who can determine that he's not competent to make his own medical decisions and override his own decision about what he wants done to himself and his body and actually deliver him electroconvulsive therapy against his will. I was assigned to a psychiatrist who was very aggressive in his manner in trying to get me to agree to do ECT. You know, I was skeptical and I said, no, I don't want to do it. The psychiatrist pretty much threatened me. He said that if I don't agree to it, then they can get a court order. My family actually sided with me. They said that they shouldn't do this to me against my wishes. Basically, all the doctors said that I needed to have ECT and that I was not in my right mind to refuse. The probate court judge agreed with them and he issued the court order and that was how they started the forced ECT on me. I was pretty much tortured. I was being forced to have this treatment. I didn't like it, I didn't want it. And when I was honest with the doctors about how it affected me and I told them they just interpreted that as part of my depression, I realized that the only way to, to stop this was to start lying, so that's what I did. What was done to me was really, frankly, evil. It's a barbaric treatment and that it, it shouldn't be done to people against their will like it was done to me. With psychiatry, like most of their treatments, these are frequently given without consent of the patient because it is the only quote-unquote medical field where their authority supersedes your rights, an individual's rights to consent to treatment. If it breaks their skin like an injection or if it's a drug that you feed into them one way or another, or if it's electroshock therapy, that is violating a person's sovereignty over his own body. A person has a... a a right to their own body. They have a right not to be violated. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture is very definite in his condemnation of coercive ECT. Against your will, electroshock therapy is, in my opinion, uh, absolutely prohibited. I have seen so many persons who have been subjected to electroshocks uh, in order to extract a confession or information, etc. And it's one of the, the worst feelings of pain you can imagine if, if this electric current is really runs through your, your body. So it's, it's uh, the contractions, it's even, it might even lead to death. Uh, in my opinion, they are torture. And some of ECT's earliest uses were quite literally torture. During the Nazi era, German psychiatrists administered lethal bouts of ECT to mental patients they deemed unfit for life. In the 1950s Algerian War, psychiatrists gave electroshock to prisoners before questioning them. The CIA trained Moroccan security services in the use of an electroshock machine for interrogations. Psychiatrists in the Soviet Union used electroshock to punish political dissidents who refused to toe the party line. In South Africa, ECT was used as a torturous method of treatment for a group that mental health considered to be animals because they actually had the idea that if you were black, you couldn't feel pain. One of the original ECT devices, which was actually manufactured in the UK, called the Page Russell, was used for torture in Arabic countries and was used on political prisoners. So how do you call something uh, help or treatment when it's been used for torture? Psychiatrists also put electroshock to use in the field of so-called mind control. In a moment, we will examine the closest experimentation to brainwashing that we have uncovered. Infamous psychiatrist Ewan Cameron 
conducted experiments putting people into a coma-like deep sleep using drugs and extreme high-voltage electroshock and reducing them to an infantile state. I thought this was the coldest and most impersonal treatment that anybody could give to anybody in the world. An avid proponent of Cameron's treatment was Australian psychiatrist Harry Bailey. Dr. Harry Bailey studied a treatment called deep sleep therapy and it involved knocking a person unconscious with a cocktail of psychiatric drugs, usually barbiturates and sedative hypnotics. And while they were in that comatose state, they were given electroshock treatment, sometimes twice daily. The patients were dying, there were 48 deaths. Over 1,100 patients were subjected to this. They all had brain damage. They all had personality changes. They had blood clots. They were seriously damaged by this so-called treatment. Tonight, why was deep sleep therapy ever allowed to happen at Chelmsford? The analogy with the appalling medical experimentation by Nazi doctors is difficult to avoid. Certainly the information that we gave to the Attorney General's department showed clearly that very often patients were given electric shock treatment without their consent. The question has remained ever since then, why hasn't the matter been satisfactorily resolved? CCHR, along with the Chelms for Victims Action Group, got local media, there were demonstrations on the steps of Parliament demanding a government inquiry into deep sleep treatment. And we worked with legislators and we agitated for reforms and it actually produced some of the biggest reforms Australia's ever seen. Good evening. There will be a Royal Commission into the controversial Chelmsford Hospital deep sleep treatment. Let me tell you that this Royal Commission will get to the bottom of all of the abuses that have gone on in the system. And it was through our investigations, through the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, working with patients and their families who had undergone this deep sleep treatment, we ended up having deep sleep treatment banned. 